Professor Hui explaining how you can concentrate wind to generate more power. So what we have here is a wind funnel for which the input has an area of A1 with input wind velocity V1 output an area of A2 with a wind velocity of E2. The first principle I'd like to explain is the conservation of flow, which means that at the input you have a flow which is A1 times V1 equal to the amount of airflow at the output which is A2 times D2. So we're going to do an experiment to verify this very simple flow conservation. What we have here is this wind funnel for which we are generating a wind flow through the use of a fan and what we have here is the input velocity is about 1.5 meter per, uh, 1.7 meter per second. So at the output here, we read a output velocity of 5.2 meter per second. So what we have is a ratio of V2 at the output divided by the velocity at the input equal to a factor of 4. Now there's a slight difference which we said uh, that A1 and A2 is a factor of 6 whereas the velocity is a factor of 4. The, way, the reason why there's a difference here, which is not very big, is because wind tend to flow faster on the periphery of this funnel than compared to the inside. So air flows faster on the outside, which obviously we're measuring the, exter uh, the, the velocity of air closer to the surface of the wind funnel. The second thing we're going to explain is the conservation of momentum, and for that, you can use this conservation law to explain why a, uh, the airplane would be lifted up as it flies through the air, or why a jet engine would be able to produce power as you burn kerosene inside uh, the jet engine. Now what we have here is the force, according to Newton, is equal to mass times acceleration. So what you have is that the air is flowing through this wind funnel with an acceleration that changes its velocity from the input of V1 to the output of V2. So you have the acceleration there, and then you also have a flow uh, of air through this particular uh, volume. So if you do the calculation, what you have is that uh, the uh, flow times velocity, uh, or the mass times acceleration, and you look at the flow times velocity on the output side, and also on the input side, and you also apply what we have done before, the conservation of flow uh, through the input and the output, and you make the substitution, what you have is the force that is experienced by this wind funnel is given by rho, the density of air, times uh, A1, which is the area at the input, times the input velocity square, multiplied by ratio, which is A1 divided by A2 minus 1. Now again, the A1 divided by A2 is a factor of 6, and therefore this A1 divided by A2 minus 1 is a factor of 5. So you can just by looking at the uh, velocity at the input which is 1.7 meter per second and rho being uh, 1 uh, ki uh, kilogram per meter square uh, and this A1 uh, given by the 17.5 dim square, you can calculate the force that is experienced by the wind funnel as it pushes air through the wind funnel. That would have a force that is going in that particular direction. The third thing we're going to look at is the conservation of energy. Now this is discovered by uh, Bernoulli, uh, which states actually the energy density along different part of the wind funnel is conserved. And energy consists of two parts. The first part, which is the pressure energy, and the second part, which is the kinetic energy. And what Bernoulli said was that the sum of the two energy adds up to a constant along the different parts of the wind funnel. So what you have is that P1 at the input plus one half of rho times V1 squared at the input is equal to the same two quantity added together at the output. Now, in this case here, what we're doing an experiment on is at this point pushing the fan about a foot apart from the input. Now, what we're going to demonstrate actually is that compared to the case when the fan is right at the input, the fan is forced to work very hard because you need to push the air 
from a much broader input area onto a very narrow output area. So the fan is forced to work very hard to push the air through. In that case, uh, the amount of energy or the power uh, that comes out here is a lot higher because the fan is forced to work very hard and you hear the rumbling sound of the fan. Now if you move this a little bit further out, what's happening is that the pressure that's created by the wind funnel create a kind of back pressure that for which the air that goes through the fan would actually be diverted on either side of the wind funnel. And what happened is that this is very similar if you pour oil into an uh, oil funnel. Um, if you pour it too hard and gravity doesn't clear the oil fast enough, the oil will overflow and flow on either side. So what, we're gonna, what we do the experiment on is uh, we're going to measure the velocity at the input of the funnel. Now if the pressure at either side is pretty much the same, therefore P1 is equal to P2, you can cancel these two. And equating the amount of energy flow through the area A1 and A2, by conservation of energy, what you have is this equality. And what you can simplify is V2 divided by V1 would then be equal to the square root of A1 divided by A2. And just looking at the earlier, which we have a factor of six, therefore you have the factor of 2.5 here. Now we're going to do some reading of uh, the wind speed here. At the input of the funnel, we have a velocity which is 1.7 meter per second. At the output, we have a velocity which is two, uh, almost uh, three. Okay, so what we have is here, and let me just uh, write this down. Is that one point uh, B two is equal to one point three, B two is three point one. One point seven. Uh, uh, V2 is 3.1 meter per second, and V1 is, so V1 is 1.7 meter per second. So you, what you have is uh, roughly uh, V2 over V1 is equal to 3.1 divided by 1.7, roughly almost a factor of 2. So it's not very far from the 2.5 here. So again, what this show is that it is not a very good idea to use a funnel to concentrate wind because what happens is that most of the air would be diverted to flow on the outside and the better way to do it is really to relieve the back pressure by cutting open this particular section so that as wind accelerates through the wind funnel the slower wind would be have an escape path that comes outside the funnel and therefore you can concentrate wind power much more effectively.